So look at this, there's a bump right here. This is Protect the Den. Produced in Orem, Utah, and found on YouTube, Twitter, and all podcast locations. White, oh my, sorry, yeah, here are your hosts, Jared Ivins and Bryce Larson. We welcome you in to Protect the Den today. I am Jared Ivins alongside... The one and only Bryce Larson. The one and the only... That's me. Bryce Larson. <laughs> yeah. He's incredible. Just Sometimes. He's Anyways, no. Nope. Sometimes he is. <laughs> We'll We're see. grateful that we'll you see. are joining us today on whatever you are watching us or listening to us on, whether it be YouTube or Google Play or Stitcher. Maybe it's Pocket Radio. Sometimes I listen to Pocket Radio. Do you listen to Pocket Radio? No, I don't. I've I actually never been on Pocket on, Radio. On Google, Google Podcast. I'm, you're an Apple Podcast kind of guy. I'm an Apple Podcast guy. Uh, sometimes I use my Amazon Alexa to listen to podcasts. Well, I've done that as well. Google Home. We have that. I have that a lot in different rooms in my house. Yep. Um, so I'll just say like, hey Google, turn on, crap, turn on. There's Google. Protect the den. <laughs> and if you say that, boom, you're gonna you're gonna hear us right in your living room, right in your car, wherever. Wherever, literally wherever you are going, or if you're working, or we're there. Sitting. You can listen to us. And we no want excuses. You to listen to us. But we are grateful <laughs> that you're here. Make sure you subscribe to whatever you're listening to on right now, watching us on, whatever it may be. Subscribe. Rate us five stars. Give Please. us a comment. Let us know how. Let we're us doing. know how we're doing. And, and Review let us, us. Know what you'd like to see on the show. Exactly. What, what you'd like us to do better. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, our rundown today. We're gonna give you our headlines. We're gonna name the fifth and newest Wolverine of the week. We're gonna give you our men's basketball weekly recap and preview this week's games. We're going to review this women's basketball hot streak. Yeah, they are playing some good ball right They're now. Seven games in a row that they've won. We're going to go over that. We're going to dive into the men's hockey West Coast trip that they just had, and we're going to finish it off with our bold predictions. The West Coast week. trip that they didn't take us on, but it's fine. We're not West, salty. We're not ah, just kidding. It's fine. It snowed 88 inches in eight days. <laughs> Let's we're jump right into the headlines. 80, okay, yeah. Headlines. <laughs> Men's basketball lost against New Mexico State University 70-56 to at home on Thursday. But they bounced back with a win against UTRGV in the last seconds by an Isaiah White layup. Huge win. 72-70 they won against UTRGV. They moved to sixth place in the WAC at 2-3 and three and 8-12 and overall. They will now have a two-game road trip. They're going to be at California State Bakersfield and also at Grand Canyon. It's going to be a hard place to win down in Grand Canyon on Saturday. Yeah, those, they're, they're both, both games actually are yeah. going to be hard to win. So it'll be good. We can catch that one on ESPN3 and on the WAC Digital Network. So tune in for those games. Women's basketball, like we said, is on fire. They are ice cold. <laughs> ice in the speak. veins. Ice, I've always wondered. They say someone's on fire, but also ice cold. Anyways. Yeah. They're, they're doing great. They're on a seven-game win streak after defeating the WAC champions last week in New Mexico State on the road, as well as traveling wow. to UTRGV and winning both of those games on the road. They yeah. beat big-time fashion. They will host CSUB this Thursday in Orem at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. on a Thursday. So it's a little earlier game. Yep, especially for a Thursday right in the no middle excuse. of the week. Still need to come out. you got to make it happen. Let's go. All right, 37 UVU student-athletes made the fall academic all-WAC list. Mm -hmm. In order for a student-athlete to make this list, they must have been enrolled in school for one full year, have a overall GPA of 3.2, and also have parti participated in 50% of their team's activities or competitions. And so we're, we want to say congratulations to those huge, 37 guys. UVU athletes. That's way to get it done in the classroom, also in your respective sports. You know what this reminds me of is when Texas last year, when they tweeted out their team highest GPA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're trying. <laughs> uh, our fourth and final headline, UVU wrestling host number 22 Stanford this Friday in the Lockhart Arena 
Uh, it's that a big be at match. 7 p.m. That's going to be, a, uh, like Bryce said, a big-time match. Uh, Stanford's very good, very competitive. UVU, like we said, top 25 in the nation in attendance for wrestling. So the combination of both yeah, is going to be it's a gonna great, be a great Friday night. It's going to be a great match. Stanford looks a little bit deeper as far as wrestlers go in different weight classes, but I think UVU will give them a run for their money. Yeah, you know, they have a couple really good wrestlers on UVU as well. Yeah. Two of them have been Big 12 Wrestler of the Week. Yeah. So we'll, it's so it's exciting. It's going to be a good match on Friday night. We'll see you all there. We got it. Now on to our favorite part of the week. We're going to name the, the fifth best part ever of the week and the brand new Wolverine of the week. And and joins really, Elite Company. Joins Elite Company. It, it's who no else contest. could it be other Dan than Nielsen. Dan, Dan Nielsen. Nielsen? Congratulations, <laughs> Dan. That's right. Hey, we did it. Dan Nielsen is the women's basketball coach. This is his first year yeah. as head coach. First year as head coach, Dan Nielsen. Uh, they started out 1-9 on the season. Yeah, it, was it was looking pretty bad. Even, uh, even you know, we were like, all right, maybe they might get into the NIT. Well, guess what? They're on a seven-game win streak now, and Dan Nielsen is now the Wolverine of the Week because he's been a – a vital part in that turnaround yeah. of this women's basketball team. Same players, same athletes, but what changed? It's now game plan. They're listening to the game plan is the coach. They're buying in. Really the team's buying into the coaching. Hundred percent. They've finally hit their stride. They're in sync. Everybody's buying in. It's great. It's great to see. It's tough for Daniels in his first year as head coach. You know, it's a rebuilding year. Not many people had high expectations, including us. Yeah, but we did. They're able to come in. Yes, they had a really rough, rocky start. Non-conference was not nice. No. But, hey, turn it on the Jets right when it matters most. We're going to hope they keep winning right here at the right time. Yeah, Come moving March, on we'll up. Come March, we'll see what they're doing. So congratulations, Dan Nielsen, our Wolverine of the Week. Joined some great other Wolverines that we've had in the past. Yeah. Yeah, very excited. All right, we're going to jump into men's hoops for a little bit and, and recap this, this week of men's hoops. Like we said, they fell to New Mexico State University and uh, had a big win against UTRGV. So let's look into maybe the three keys to the game that we pointed out last week going against New Mexico State and, and see how those went, Bryce. Yeah, the first key to the game that we had talked about was how UVU needs to shoot 50% or better from the field. But, yeah, they needed that. Yeah, they were – they averaged – UVU averages 43% a game, so they needed to shoot over 50. They didn't get that done. They shot 40% from the field. Earlier on, they were over that 50% mark, yeah. but as the game went on, they, they weren't able to to make that happen. Yeah, in, in the first half, we saw them shooting well there at 52 51%. Yeah, they started off great. Yeah, they were down seven at halftime. Um but they weren't able to hold on to that. Um, right. Number two, we identified that UVU needs to limit the turnovers to 10 or less. Both teams, New Mexico State and UVU, were averaging 14 and a half a game. Yeah, that that's a big number. That did not happen. UVU had 14 turnovers um, yeah. on last Thursday, so they were not able they to gotta do They got to get that number down. If they want to keep winning games, they got to take that number down. Gotta stop giving away free points. And it's not even the turnovers that are a bad factor. It's when you shoot bad, then you're not even then, giving yourself a chance. It's just and as then you bad add as turnover. Yeah, you add the turnovers in, and it gets worse. So, all right, for the third key of the game, we said that UVU has to start strong. Okay, we had talked about how in both of its last two losses before this, UVU found itself in an early first half deficit. They were down by quite a bit against Seattle, against um, other teams as well. So they did well this past week against Mexico State within the first five minutes, but yeah. then at halftime they were they were down 34 to 27. Not, not in terrible position, down yeah. seven. They weren't in a terrible position, but I, it could have been a lot better. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. Well, I guess you need to start strong, but finish even stronger. Right. That's and exact. towards the end of the game, they had the chance to bring it within 11. With just under five minutes to play, there was a missed three-pointer. Um, that is not the, really the key moment because they did get it down to 12 on the next possession. Yeah. But it's tough to be able to string together these runs, especially late in the game, if you're not making shots. Exactly. 
So they did get some key stops that they needed on the defensive side of the ball, unable to come up with the shots that they needed on the other end to at least put New Mexico State in a, in a position where they felt uneasy, where UVU maybe could trap and press a little bit in the last three or four minutes. Not able to be in, in that position, and the win got out of their hands. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the UTRGV game. Uh, th much better. This, this game started off a little bit bad for Utah Valley. They came out, and they were down – um, at least 10 in the first half. And then, you know, Mark Madsen, he had talked about how they had come out. They weren't prepared for what UTRGV threw at them with the full court trap. And they started that really early in the game. Yeah, as soon as the game started, they, you know, they'd score. They'd go straight into full court yeah. trap. It kind of threw off the offensive rhythm of UVU. It's a great game plan by the coaches for our UTRGV. But what ended up happening, Mark Madsen called the timeout. He, he told his guys, hey, let's switch up the game plan a little bit. And then slowly but surely, you know, at, we had talked about during the game that uh, UVU wasn't driving the ball into the key, into the paint. No. And, they and were just passing it around the top 100%. and throwing up bad shots late in the shot clock. And that kind of showed uh, with the game plan that they had um, to see if they, you know, UTRGV came prepared on defense and it kind of – Caused a lot of kinks with yeah. UVU's offense. UVU wasn't really moving the ball and, and attacking the rim, especially there in the first half. That's why they fell into that early deficit. The difference is they were quickly able to identify those faults and change them. Yeah. So throughout the game, UVU had a really tough time shooting the three ball. They were 5 for 21. They only shot 23% from three. Yeah. That's it's yeah. awful. That's pretty bad. But... Overall, it was a great team game. They were 42% from the field, and, and a big part where they've done well is the free throw line this year. They shot yeah. 80% from the field. They were nearly perfect in the first half. They missed a couple more in the second half. But um, that was a huge thing. And then the other one, Defense. the other one was the out Ola rebounded. 39-33. Yep, they got the rebounds. But then They had a huge <laughs> scoring off of the bench. They outscored them 43-10. But the biggest factor, Ola, Ola Japoke. He dominated. It was great defense. I don't know if I've seen a defensive performance within the last few years as good as what I saw he, on Saturday. He, to me, is the leader for WAC Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. And well, I mean, he, he's like fifth in the nation in blocks out of he, the whole Division One basketball. 56 blocks in the year? <laughs> It's incredible. He better be somewhere up there with the WAC Defensive Player of the Year. Well, it's not even the fact that he had five block shots himself. It's how many shots he alters. So yeah. he's blocking five shots, but what about all the shots that come into the lane and then instead of getting a layup, they have to hook it. To go around him. Or they do a different fadeaway or they end up passing it out. So he's affecting shots. And that's yeah. not shown on, on the stat sheet in the box score. That's something we are able to see and something that obviously Coach Madsen has seen. Yeah. And they really revolve their defense up around E-Man. Yeah, and, and, you know, let's go and see what – let's check in and see what – Mark Madsen had to say after both of these games this week. I was proud of our guys. Um, we had, we played probably 25, 30 minutes of great basketball against New Mexico State. Um, we let a couple of their shooters get loose, a couple of inopportune turnovers, and that game turned a little bit south, even though we battled back at the end. So it was a tough loss against New Mexico State, but I was, I was proud of our guys today for going out there, executing the game plan. And really, you can't say enough about every player that stepped on the court. Well, Mark Madsen, he, he put it perfectly. Um, great team win. It's, yeah, all, uh, he was proud of every single player that stepped on the court. Can't say more about your guys. Yeah, they played great as a team against UTRGV, and hopefully they continue that against CSUB this and, week. And they're going to need that. This week they travel. They have two road away games. Um, first off, they, they play CSUB this Thursday. Now, CSUB is on a two-game win streak, and they're looking to get back to 500 on the year. Yeah. So they're 9-10 and 10 overall. They want to get to 10-10. 10 and 10. Um, In conference play, though, they've really done well. 3-1 the conference. 3-1, exactly. They've had tough wins over people that are teams that UV's lost to. Yeah, and at home is really like where they love to play. Obviously, every team loves to play at home. But <laughs> home bacon. For Cal California State, Bakersfield, it's, they're 6-4 and four at home. Their away record is three and six right now. So Little obviously bit. they love to play at home. Yeah, definitely. They're they're comfortable there. They're you know that's where their bread and butter is, uh, and some of their you know 
they're three and one in conference. Their three wins they came against Grand Canyon, Chicago State, and also Kansas City. Yeah. Okay, so Kansas City was actually a road game for them. So they won in Kansas City. A team that UVU they, was not able to beat. Exactly, something UVU couldn't do. And so this is going to be a tough game in California for the Wolverines upcoming. they yeah. gotta, they got to show up to play. It, it's really big for them to go on the road this week and get that done. It'll be a good test for them. It'll be good to see where UVU stands in the WAC standings yeah. after this weekend. Because we've got Grand Canyon who's struggling. Mm. They, they are struggling this year. They're struggling more but, than usual. But that is a very, very tough environment to play in. We've yeah. seen what they've been able to create down there. And so it's anyway, a winnable it, game. it's winnable, but it's tough. It's still going to be tough. Definitely. And then you have Cal State Bakersfield who's great at home. And they're very they're three and one in the WAC, so it'd be nice to bump them down. We could think about it. we're two and three. They're three and one. We beat Cal State Bakersfield, right? And then say we go and beat UVU. All of a sudden, they jump all the way. Yeah. From sixth, you could maybe fourth or third, fourth or third place yeah. in the WAC. Huge. So this road, these two road games will be pivotal for the Wolverines to get a better seed in the WAC tournament Give and to really start striding yeah. for the season. So. Seven games. Seven games is what the UVU women's basketball team has won in a row. They're currently on fire. They started a little rocky, one and nine, but now they're eight and nine with an incredible turnaround. Thank you, yeah. of course, to Dan Nielsen, our Wolverine of the Week. He has been pivotal and, and critical at this time for this turnaround, and it's at the right time, too. Yeah, it's it's. Perfect timing. Right as they enter <laughs> whack play. They're 5-0 and in whack play right now. You couldn't ask for better whack play. I love that. And uh, they, they've had huge wins, too. They started the win streak against Utah State, beat Ottawa, Arizona with a huge 49-point win. Also had big wins against Chicago State and Kansas City. And they've just been on fire right now. They Beat Seattle. Beat the defending whack champions, New Mexico on State. On the road. Yeah, in New Mexico. That's Huge. One, that's great. And then UT Rio Grande Valley, they also beat as well on Saturday. And think about so, it. The majority of those recent wins have keep been on the road. Yeah. Keep so it now rolling. we're coming home. Keep it rolling. Tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., get work done. And the, this Come and join UVU the valley. woman's streak has not been unnoticed. Yeah. Um, it was uh, ESPN basketball analyst Charlie Cream who recognized this and has UVU currently in the NCAA double – the NCAA tournament. Which is huge. They're currently seeded as a 16th seed. They match up with Oregon in his predictions. But think about that. Back at the beginning of the year when we gave our ceiling and expectations, we didn't think UVU women's was going to even have a chance at the NCAA. We thought maybe NIT if they're lucky yeah, and CIB. Ceiling, we had put their ceiling at the uh, NIT tournament. And so... If this turnaround can keep going, to the NCAA tournament, that, that's, that's incredible. Well. We'd so, love to see that. Go women's basketball. Keep fighting. Keep winning keep games. Keep it rolling. Stay ice cold. Go Lady Wolverines. All right, men's hockey. They are coming off of a road trip to California. Um, we're we were going to go. We're not bitter. We were going to go. Broadcast a couple games for them. Um, Who wouldn't want to go to Southern California in January? Yeah, sounds like a nice... Maybe you know, me. I mean, it snowed 88 but, hey, inches. 88 inches. The good inches. thing is... Maybe it was days. good that we didn't go because they won without us. Hey, they did. They got a huge win against Santa Barbara. They won 5-2 to two versus UC Santa Barbara. And they had five different goal scores. Yeah. Incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. That is actually really great to have, especially that really shows the depth of your hockey team. Oh, yeah. Be able 100%. to spread the puck around, be able to have five people scoring. And, and that's something earlier in the season we saw, especially towards the end sure. of last year. They weren't really moving the puck around. Yeah. It was kind of get across mid ice into the front ice and, and then just rush a shot. throw something Hurry up. up and shoot it. And and that's not how they're able to play. It's best when multiple people are touching the puck across the ice, moving the defense around, and you know it's something you have the advantage of in in hockey compared to other sports. You can go behind the goal. Yeah. That's one of the only, lacrosse is also that way. Yeah. But that's one of the only sports. It kind of confuses some of those defenders because they're, A, watching out the front of the goal line. Another one, they the puck is moving around. They don't have the best vision back there. So uh -huh. 
Way to move the puck around, guys. Way to go in there, get that dub against uh, UC Santa Barbara. Get work done. They also uh, played two matches against Cal State and Northridge, mm. and they lost both of those contests against them. But, hey, this this trip was about going and getting experience, and that's what Coach Peck wants. Yeah. Um, and that's what they got. They got, you know, a good confidence booster with a 5-2 win against UCSB. So Yeah. And, and we've seen this, and we've spoken to Coach Peck, and this is really a tough time for UVU scoring-wise because they are just recently jumped up to a new division in hockey. So instead of playing those teams that they were obviously better than, now they're playing tougher teams, better athletes, better competition yeah. in new areas, new arenas. It's tough. It's kind of like a rebuilding year, just as we've seen in these other sports with Mark Madsen, brand new coach, also Dan Nielsen. Yep. Tough situation. They're still getting all of the, the kinks worked out. 100%. They're trying to have those players buy into the program. So it's a, yeah. it's a process. You just got to trust the process. Obviously, the goal is eventually getting to NCAA, but that is a little further away. That's a lot of work. We're not worried. We have faith. It's going to come. Good. Good on you, view men's hockey. Keep on winning. Keep it up, guys. But I'll tell you what. Let's let's take a look at these bold predictions. This is where we game. need to start winning. We haven't won <laughs> yet. All right. Well, let's take a look at what our bold predictions were last week. Exactly. Number one bold prediction for me: UVU will out rebound the Aggies at home tomorrow night. UVU is averaging thirty six rebounds per game. They will out rebound the Aggies tomorrow night. All right. It's pretty bold. And you do it right in front of those home fans here in Orem. Better get excited. Let's go. All right. Here's my bold prediction. Let's hear it. UVU will overcome their scoring woes they had up in Seattle. And they will have not one, but three players in double digits scoring tomorrow night. One, two, and three. That's bold. That's bold. There's a well, Jared, <laughs> once again... We didn't we do blew very it. well. Well, <laughs> UVU was out rebounded, thirty-five to twenty-eight, and Brandon Averett did not lead all scores. It was both New Mexico State teams that had. You know what? I'm just proud to say that I was the closest with my bold prediction. Isaiah White had sixteen, and Kasdan Jardine had ten. TJ Washington. TJ Washington had eight. He, he was a one bucket. One bucket away. One bucket away from you getting that first dub. <sighs> we're all right. It's all right. We're fine. We uh, looking, score. looking forward this I week. That last one, TJ. We have we have out. some new bold predictions we're excited TJ. about. I'll go first. All right. Number one, my bold prediction: Eman Emmanuel Olajapoke will have four blocks against CSU Bakersfield, Cal State Bakersfield. He had five against UTRGV. He's only averaging 2.8 a game. And I know you don't like my bold prediction. Um, yeah, no. But I like it. I'm sticking to it. You, right. you can try to talk me out of it. I, I'm staying. E-Man will have four, four blocks. blocks. I'd say it's bold if it's five since, you know, he had five and six. He's had two games where he's had five and six. I, okay, it's my bold prediction. You can make the bold prediction yourself. <laughs> no, you, can, you can get I'm style gonna points. I'm going to switch it up here. I'm Flip switch the script. Up my my uh, bold prediction can go a little bit different. The, the men's basketball teams let me down the last couple of weeks. Yeah, they have. Predictions. So I'm going to go with the red-hot women's basketball team. I'm going to say that since the women's basketball team, here's a stat for you, they've only scored 75 or more points in four games this season. Okay? Four of All their... four of those games have been wins. Four of their eight wins, 75-plus. So my bold prediction is against Cal State Bakersfield, on Thursday, the women's basketball team will score 75 points or more in a win. So they're both. together. Together. It's not two separate. Correct. That way you could have the chance to get two points where if they win, you get one. 75 points or more, they get one. Correct. I'm going with the one where they win and, and they score 75 points right. or more. So not bad. the same one. They're, I'll be at one point. Yeah. I'll be leading Jared by the time this time next week. <laughs> We're going to be tied. Both are going to help us out. That, that's the goal. We both want to all get them right. Anyways, looking once again into our headlines. This guy doesn't know what's going on. Men's basketball lost against M NMSU 70-56 to at home on Thursday. 
They quickly rebounded and had a huge win against UT RGV Saturday, 72-70 on an Isaiah White game winner. That was a great game on Saturday. UCCU Center was was loud. Rocking. They were rocking. And, and it was great. It was super fun. Here is that, that clip that we got from that game winner from Isaiah White. <laughs> Got T.J. Washington to Isaiah White. <laughs> Coach Lou Hill. Amazing shot, amazing play. T.J. Washington getting into the lane. Um, UVU now is sixth Spread place. That ball around, maybe. Yeah, they move the ball really well. They're sixth place in the WAC, two and three in the WAC play, and eight and twelve overall. They now have a two-game road trip. You can see that um, ESPN three against Cal State Bakersfield. Yep. On Thursday and Saturday on the WAC Digital Network against Grand Canyon. Yeah, women's basketball, hey? On Seven game win streak. Fire. Seven game win streak Let's after being WAC champions, New Mexico State, and then also on the road against UTRGV this past week. Yeah? Yeah. They're, they're on fire. Jordan Holland and Eve Bresley are both averaging over 10 points a game. Yep. They're leading the way. They're going to host. CSUB on Thursday at 11 a.m. here in Orem. Early game, but guys. Come out, support we'll see this red-hot women's basketball team. Number three, 37 UVU student-athletes, 37, have made the fall academic all-whack list. That's a huge number, a huge impressive stat. We're very proud of them. All 37 of you, and even the ones that were close but didn't make it, that requires them to have a GPA of 3.2 or higher to participate in 50% or more of the contests that, yeah. that season and to have been in school for over a year. Wow. Congratulations to those student athletes. That's a great accomplishment. They're on fire. That's great. Finally, our last headline of the day, UVU Wrestling will host number 22 Stanford on Friday night in the Lockhart Arena. At 7 p.m. So we what a great need date night. you there. Go watch some wrestling. Who take, doesn't want to go on a date and go watch... watch some UVU men's wrestling, man? Yeah, exactly. Just do it. It's a great. Day. Get ice cream after. Get free. Get in free with your UVU ID. Nothing better. We'll see you guys there. We have a lot of great things happening on Protect the Den. We're actually going to be setting up a booth. Um, in UVU Hall of Flags or in other areas. And if you come and check us out while we're That'll there, be next Wednesday, we're going to be giving out today. some swag. We're going to be giving out some free stuff. We're going to so be making check it out. We have some sponsors we're excited to work with. We'll be announcing some of those next week. Yep. Um, we'll recap them on the show, of course, and post them out on Twitter. But if you're there in person, you'll be able to enter into a drawing for some gift cards, some awards. And, and we're very excited for what's going forward. Once again, like review share subscribe everything to the podcast whether that's on twitter youtube any podcast location we appreciate it so much we're thankful for you joining us here today on protect the den until next time i'm bryce larson i'm jared ivins go wolverines